So remember, there are two types of sensory receptors for the general senses, unencapsulated, shown on the left here, and encapsulated. Um, so we're going to see some specific examples of each here. So first, let's start with just the unencapsulated. That's these free nerve endings. So unencapsulated. These are located throughout the entire body, um, inside and out, all over. Basically, many stimuli for these, many types of stimuli. Um, some specific things that they respond to are pain. So nociceptors are free nerve endings. Not all free nerve endings are nociceptors. Um, temperature. So with thermal receptors. And then touch. So these are mechanoreceptors. And again, all of the, these can be either on like in the skin shown here, but also in epidermal layers in inside the body. So digestive tract, um, blood vessels, all kinds of places for free nerve endings. Okay, then there are different types of encapsulated and they're all specialized for for different functions so in the hair shaft there are um, nerve endings that within the hair follicles so these are mechanoreceptors Me mechanoreceptors is that what i just said that respond when hair moves um, these are also a type of exteroreceptor then specifically because they're in the hair. Um, there are down here, Merkel cell. This is one example um, within the general senses where there are actual separate cells. So this is two cells, kind of like those special senses. These Merkel cells are also called tactile discs. So these are good at responding to um, low frequency vibration. All right, let me add in the word frequency there. Um, so they're a type of mechanoreceptor. And um, within, this, within the skin. Okay, um, notice then there's this afferent fiber for this, but for all of these sensory receptors, there's afferent fibers that would travel. So here's the nerve ending um, past a unipolar cell body to the central nervous system. So this is the direction that these, all these sensory systems are, are going. Okay, I'm getting new color here. Um, down here, this is kind of deeper within the skin, so deep within the dermis, are called bulbous corpuscles. So an, another capsule, um, connective tissues surrounding the dendrites here. Um, this allows it to respond to stretch. Is a specific type of mechanical receptors. So these are located in the skin as shown here, also in joint capsules. So they can detect um, stretch at, in joints. Good way for your joints to regulate the amount of movement that they're allowing. Okay, and you can see their long structure kind of makes sense they could respond to stretch. Okay, going up here, layers of collagen fibers um, these are called lamellar. It's an A.
also called Bacinian corpuscles. These are um, fairly kind of midway down the dermis. Um, they respond to pressure, but a little bit deeper pressure. So deep pressure, a little bit of stretch, and then high frequency vibration. And this is because of these connected tissue layers around the outside, um, a lot of them to respond. Okay, last one in the picture here. Um, this cap capsule here is called a tactile corpuscle. So again, tactile is touch. Um, these are good at sensing light touch. You can see down here, they're kind of closer, they're in the epidermis. Um, so they're not gonna be, respond to quite as, as hard of a touch, but they can, that surface touch. Um, so another type of, okay, all of these are mechanoreceptors, except for some of the free nerve endings that respond when they respond to pain or temperature. Um, two more types that aren't shown here that I want to name here. One is called muscle spindles. These are involved in detecting muscle stretch. So also mechanical receptors. And then Golgi tendon apparatus. These are located in tendons. So also going to be activated when you have stretch of a muscle because the tendons are attached to the muscles. Okay. And then again, these are all types of somatosensory receptors, meaning our somata sensation, right? So typically um, types of touch and sensation that can be conscious um, aren't when they aren't always and that aren't specialized. So this is not things like light and um, for vision, hearing, things like that. There are three pathways that are going to take this information to the brain from these sensory receptors. They're all starting at this neuron here that is carrying information to the CNS with its cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. Again, for conscious perception, we have to go through to the cerebral cortex. That's going to be via the thalamus. Um, but there are pathways that go, for example, to the cerebellum instead of the cerebral cortex. So that's what we'll look at next is the type of the different pathways that these different senses um, and stimuli take.